Hey everybody, my name is Gabriela Corvina. I'm an actress and a martial artist, and this is my series, The Modern Day Hero Podcast. Now, if you haven't seen this series before, I talk to modern day heroes who are not only heroes on the screen, but also in real life. Now, I have some very, very um, special guests with me today, um, but before I introduce them to you guys, I'm going to go ahead and clap it in. All right, so, who are you guys? Huh? <laughs> well, I'm the daddy. I'm the oldest brother. I'm the next, next oldest brother. He's <laughs> <laughs> the middle child. <laughs> now, you guys have probably seen all three of these guys in at least one of my fight scenes. She's beating them um, up. Pretty much beat made them, up. you know, drag them in up. there and beat them up. She gives us the worst roles. <laughs> Anyways, um, but you guys have probably seen all of them before, um, but you probably didn't know that we're all family. Um, I come from a martial arts family, and you guys get to sit in on with those people today. Um, so starting down the line, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Well, um, my name is Eddie Bosson. I'm the dad, the father, and the, uh, I guess the one that Produce these guys <laughs> where they're at, you know, as far as, uh, yeah, you know, as far as uh, my lineage and stuff, passing it to them. So, uh, my name is Donnie Posas, I'm uh, a martial artist as well. Uh, I'm a personal trainer and coach in our gym, our family gym, and a father of four. And, uh, yep. Yeah, my name is Eduardo Posas, um, I'm also a personal trainer and coach at our family gym. Um, black belt and people karate. Uh, yeah. And my name is Gabriela Corvina. Anyways, okay, so kind of just getting into it. Um, starting with you, Dad, kind of tell our audience what our lineage, because coming from you, I think that's so important to tell. Um, kind of my audience knows me, you know, you guys have seen me in my um films and my fight scenes on Instagram, on YouTube, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you guys um, haven't really seen, you know, where I come from. And I, I can't really take credit for all the things that I do because it really comes from, you know, these three guys. I didn't just um, learn under my dad. I also learned under my brothers um, being the youngest of the family. Um, but it all started with my dad. So tell us a little bit about, you know, where this all started. Sure. Well, you know, for a while, I want to tell you that I think it's a very special thing that um, you don't see nowadays. Families have something passed down to them, you know, and I think that's very special uh, that I'm able to pass down to my children uh, something that was very special to me, and, um, and it's great. And I not only do martial arts, but I'm also a woodworker, too. So that side, uh, they kind of delved in that, too. And probably most of the stripping and sanding, which they don't like to do. Yeah. Uh, but we 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 kept the martial arts. Yeah. You know, woodworking and sanding. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's okay, we'll pass on that. But it, it's cool, you know. Uh, that was uh, I think as far as all my accomplishments and I got multiple black belts in different systems and all that. But my best accomplishment is passing that heritage to them and that lineage. And I think that's you know, I got, by all means, that's the best that I could do, you know, and when I'm uh, gone from this earth, you know, it's something that I can, they can say, hey, you know, my dad, this came from my dad. Um, I started when I was 15 years old and, and you know, back then <clears throat> it was, uh, you either live in an area uh, where you were close to a martial arts gym, you know, a dojo, whatever. Uh, I got brought up where there was, it was a small town, there was no schools, you know, for, for miles. And uh, of course, my first thing I saw Bruce Lee when I was 11, and man, I was like, God, I love that, I gotta do that. So that got me interested in pirating, uh, as well as many people around the world. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I went to high school in Irving and uh, joined a Kempo Karate School uh, run by instructor, Mr. Rick Fowler. 
were very comfortable for me because uh, I was always a good striker. I think, you know, my, I always had fast hands. So it really, uh, it was something that I delved into and it was very comfortable for me. You know, I've been in Taekwondo, I've been in just several other different arts, but that, that's my foundation art. And from there, it's then into the Philippine Armies. Um, I've done everything from Sila, from, you know, Muay Thai, I mean, just different, different uh, arts. And uh, like I said, I'm a multiple uh, black belt and uh, different systems. And I've created a system to where <clears throat> uh, it's something, you know, it's a mixture of all that. And it's my style. It's something that I'm comfortable with, and I pass it down to my children. And, and you know, and it's something that uh, uh, Master Ed Parker from the Kempo system uh, always tailored fit his system to each individual student. And that's what I've done with these guys. You know, um, my oldest here. I mean, he's he, he's just a beast in the, on, the, on the ground. And, you know, kicker and, and uh, oh, you know, as far as fire, you know, mm-hmm. he's very good. And oh, anyway, sure. you know, he's got the, the boxing skills, tremendous boxer. Mm-hmm. You know, and Gabby, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she just, she just, I don't know, she's, she kicks our butt off. Yeah. I don't know how she does that. Yeah, she does. That works. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, you know, I pass it. They each have a different flavor of me, and uh, which is great. So, um, but hey, you know, uh, I hope I can still be doing this till, you know, I'm seven or eight years old. So, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up for you in the martial arts specifically, because all all of our stories are very different from you know, Being like artist. like my, like Pop said. <clears throat> Being the first um, one. Yeah. Uh, it, it. That means I got beat up. Uh, he was a guinea pig. Guinea pig. That's right. Um, yes. Dad would be like, "Come here, son. Let me try something on you. <laughs> Let me punch me here. Uh, grab me here. Ah, okay, okay. Ah. So was okay. that was my yeah. So that's a special. If you don't know martial arts, say, hey, would you be my okay? Or you know, that actually means would you be my dummy, yeah. my live dummy. Okay. <laughs> so I was the first number one dummy for the poses uh, martial mm-hmm. arts. Uh, but me growing up, uh, I remember at five years old, my dad gave me a pair of boxing gloves and fighting with my cousin with them. So it came real natural for me to uh, fight and uh, my dad would, would train me um, at a young age. So it was like almost like those, those movies that you see, you know, that you see a father train your child or just a small, small, you know, area, it's not, it wasn't at a commercial uh, dojo or martial arts school, it was in the garage outside, um, and he, he would train me. And it was, it was tough. Some people would call it child abuse, but it wasn't. <laughs> I'm still alive and well. And you started uh, at what age? I was five, six years old. Yeah, easily. Uh, I think when it got really serious was around, I was seven, I guess, is when, yeah, we moved to Cedar Hill. And he, dad turned the garage, put carpet on the floor, and and he put me in the space. Actually, before that, I remember I actually trained with a, a boy named Jerry Wayne in Milford. So I was like around six years old. And that's when he taught me several things. You know, not only do you physically learn things, but mentally. My dad would make me mentally tough. And he put me against the wall and do the splits. And, you know, he would stretch me out until I started crying, tears coming out of my eyes. I would say, I'll be back later. I'm going to be sure. <laughs> and then he'd say, I'll let you go when you stop crying. So I learned, you know, how to be able to put that pain, you know, at an early age away from me, you know, just go past it. It'll, it'll pass, you know, like if you're going through something hard, you know. It'll, it'll soon pass, you know, it'll be over soon enough. Just at the, during that time, it's hurting, but it'll go, it'll go by, you know. And so at early age, dad was teaching me that, you know. He also taught me at early age was, I want to teach you how to fight, not to fight. Where, you know, as a child, you're like, what? I'm going to learn how to beat up people so I don't beat up people? It was so confusing at first. But as you grow up, you realize you, you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to, because I've been, yeah, no violence because I'm already getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> 
there is no point of fighting it's anymore when you're training. Yeah, you you learn you you learn how tough you are, and, and he said he had to teach me that. You know, not to start fights, things like that. So at mm-hmm. seven, but my dad would train me in the garage, and I was really the I was the first one. You know, because uh, they were they were just little. I was even born. Yeah, born. she wasn't even born. Was born. Uh, uh, Edward was he just born. Yeah, you're a baby, mm-hmm. and then then the teenage years, and I, my dad would teach me. And I'd go to other. I'd go to Taekwondo school okay. and. <clears throat> I want to say it's all traditional. You went to other dojos? I went to other dojos. Yeah. Wow. And I beat up on the higher belts <laughs> mm-hmm. that were there. It was know. funny. I mean, he wasn't even. It's funny because I really didn't rank him. I mean, I did, but he would go to, say, a Taekwondo school or a dojo school and he would just wipe them out. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, his kicks were up here and you're like, wow, you know. And I remember creating a kata for him. And I, I had him join the Taekwondo school, right. the school. Wow. and they already moved him up because his wow. kicks were just phenomenal. Yeah. And he would take trophies and everything. Yeah, I went to her first yeah. tournament. I remember it. I was yeah. young. It was, I think I was sixth, fifth, sixth grade, whatever. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And never recorded something. Yeah. I <laughs> never went to China before. There was this big old tall kid, everyone talking about, oh, he's the best, whatever. He's been winning the last three years, and I beat him in sparring and the kata, and it was my first time. I took home first two six foot trophies. It was phenomenal. It was, it was fun, uh, but it was under my dad's training, you know, because it was so. All the attention was to me, like, you know, I just remember kick the kick the shield hard, and I kick it hard harder. Kick it hard. I can't ever see Kill Bill. Let me go, Dad. He needs to grow this out a little bit more. Yeah. Give me up. You know, <laughs> faster. I go, ah, faster. Oh. So that's you know that's how I grew up. So it was like, hey, you do at, you know hard everything, fast, harder, quicker. It helped me as an athlete too. I played football and things like that. But yeah, the quickness is one of the things that my dad really was uh, really focused on. Be quick, be fast. He was very fast. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm still fast. Yeah. I just got a little fat, a little yeah. muscle now, man. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what do you like for you? Yeah. Um, yeah I coached them. Yeah. <laughs> these are my coaches right here. Uh, I started early. It's five, six years old, something like that. Um, do you remember the dojo? Oh, the one in the Yeah. The one in the one in the blue. The red. Yeah. 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 I remember. Um, Would you call yeah. you and me? United Martial Arts. No, you and me. You and me. United, United Martial Arts. Okay. United, United Martial Arts. Arts. Yep, that's what it was. That's, the that's what you named it? Yep, United yeah. Martial yeah. Arts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the first gym that I remember. Did you have anything for it? Uh, yeah, that was in Serial with uh, Joseph. Just on the door. And then before that was in the Yeah. yeah. Right. That was the first commercial building. Yeah. These guys were my, my instructors, and um, I was just mixed in at an early age. Shoot. At the house, me and the honey would grapple all the time. I would grapple with my brothers, you know. Um, so you don't before, grapple with dad though, because he'll make you cry, yeah. and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then be like, you can't play anymore. Yeah, father would be like, oh, you can't play anymore. No <laughs> you be like, no, I can do it. I can go. <laughs> it's fun. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah those things like that. It definitely, man. Um, it definitely does a lot of mental. Mental health. Or, I mean, definitely, you can definitely see physical, physically, you can shape, physically, learn skill, physically. Um, you know, you can definitely see the change. But mentally, it does a lot too, as well. Like he was saying, um, you don't have to prove yourself to anybody because you're in that gym, you're sparring and beating up on people. You're proving you're yourself every day. And you're confident, you know. Every, every week. week. Yeah, every week when you spar, you prove to yourself that you can whoop ass type thing. Type, type of thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> And so you don't you don't go around. And we got chip on your shoulder. We got kids in here, okay? I know. <laughs> so you know, so it takes that that chip off your shoulder. You know, a lot of people get in altercations because they feel like their man has been tested and they got to prove themselves. So it takes that away. You know, because you you prove it every day. You're training, you know how tough you are. You know, if it came down to it, you know, throw it in. You can throw it down. So. Um, I didn't get in any fights growing up. 
I didn't. You know, I learned how to maneuver my way through things. I didn't get to any fights till I was in college. But that was because, you know, some just unforeseen thing. Wrong place, wrong time. I got to fight all the time. Yeah, this guy was yeah. I got to fight all the time. Tell that story. Tell that story. I was five years ago. You dead. You oh, said, I'm yeah. only five. I'm just better than that. So this is even before me really training, right? Yeah. Yeah. But this is how yeah. aggressive I was. It was crazy. I mean, Donnie has always been real passionate, real, you know, to me, real aggressive. And I bought him this little guitar. He loved, he loved his guitar. <laughs> and uh, he came, <laughs> I was going to school. He was going to school. You were going to school? Yeah, he's on a bus. Right? Right. He was picking me up there. And uh, you had a guitar? I had a guitar. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just saw him beating them. <laughs> yes, I was a little kid. I was like, Donnie, but I a kid. Right? He grabbed He grabbed He took my guitar away from me. He broke it. He broke it. He still it. has some hurt feelings about it. Yeah. Obviously. So I took that guitar around <laughs> and I was hitting him with the broken guitar. Yes. So <laughs> my dad had to call me. And that's what I really remember when I was out. I said, Yes, sir. I said, Donnie, what are you doing? <laughs> I saw this kid about to kill this poor kid. <laughs> but, you know, it was because, he, you know, I got him this guitar and it was something special for him. It was, yeah. it was a special thing for him. So. But oh, he's always, oh, like, oh my God. Well, I mean, if, I, I got picked on when I was younger. I grew up in a uh, dominantly black community, and I'm an Asian kid, only an Asian kid there. So, you know, they picked on me, and always had to prove something. They're, yeah, I mean, for them yeah. or something. Yeah. And they become. Well, it wasn't always black kids or. It was Mexican. I was just picked on because I was, I guess, Asian. That's really true. Really, really, yeah, the only one, really. <laughs> No and Filipinos then, we yeah, there's no Filipinos where we come up from. So, well, what happened is we get in a fight and then become my best friend afterwards. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I beat him up, right. you know, the next day uh, I, I beat him up and that was it. And then after elementary fighting in seventh grade, then no one messed with me anymore. So yeah, that's good. So no, 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 they stopped messing with me. I just said, don't mess with Donnie. You know, so I gained everyone's respect. But I respect the people too as well. So we yeah, had those many fights, man. I don't know how to get any fights, but well, that's good. I really did. Do you remember your tournament you did? Oh yeah, I used to whoop butt, man. Well, I, I coached you, I remember. Yeah, we used to come home with those big trophies all the time. First place, all of them. Kevin too. Yeah, I was cold on Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for me, it was, um, you know, all of our experiences, I think, are very specific to us, you know, like, you know, Pops was saying, he taught us very differently. Times were different. You know, I'm the youngest. Um, you know, so by that time, I was in martial arts. We already had a decent sized gym. We had Dale and Christy. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being taught before that at a different gym. Um, my very first memory, my very first memory of going to a gym, I don't know if it, it might have been Dale and Christy's. I, I really don't know. But I was very little. Um, and I remember there were sticks along the wall, um, and there was this guy who was training in our niece and I was changing, I was changing into my gi, um, in the room with my dad and he goes, hurry, hurry, you know, they're coming, you know, he's coming, the guy, whoever it was, he's coming, you know, put your pants on or something. Um, and that's all I remember. That's all I remember. Um, so I know. Uh, you know, he started introducing it to me around five years old, but I don't think I really started until I was around seven. And then we got into down Christie's by that time. Um, mm -hmm. and that's whenever we really started, but oh, going back to before down Christie's, I remember something. Oh. I remember something. My earliest memories. But, I got, I was a gym baby. I remember yeah. just deep oh, yeah. I remember yeah. dad just oh, teaching yeah. classes and I'm just sitting there in the mm -hmm. back by the weights or something. Mm -hmm. Just chilling. Me and Eric are mm -hmm. in the back in the office or something, chilling. Quang was a baby, you know. Quang was a baby. You know. But ever since I was a No Very early memories yeah. of games, you know. Mm -hmm. Seeing Pop, seeing Donnie, seeing Donnie train and everything. And yeah, we all gravitate to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, you know, dad said something earlier where he was like, um, you know, I didn't really belt Donnie, but you know, he was going into these. And Until I, later on. When I was young. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. You know what? It's not but, that he didn't belt. No, no, no. no. He but did. There was no going into like what I was uh, saying. Um, 
He taught us. I think he was, he I was taught teaching us. you so much. Right, that's what I'm saying. Man, he was so teaching us stuff that, you know, normally in normal gyms, you would, you know, you get tested on and belted on. Um, and, you know, you know, at Donnie's age, you know, he was beating up older, you know, belt ranks or older people or whatever mm-hmm. it was. And I, I remember growing up that that's kind of how it was. I mean, that's still a reality for me. I'm still not a black belt because of, because of that. Um, mm-hmm. But... And, but she's you know, going through the stuff. Yeah. But that's the thing is that I was taught those things, and we were taught those things. Um, and just because, I mean, yeah, but what really makes a black belt? I mean, right, exactly, we're, and that's what I want to get into. That's what I want to get into. Did do people consider Bruce Lee a black belt? There is this right. He wasn't. Wow. Uh, per se. Yeah, per se. Per right? se. But um, there's this quote in Karate Kid. This was like what made the movie for me. Everything yeah. else was kind of meant, but which one? This quote. Which, which, which Karate Kid? New Karate Kid? Oh, the old one. The original. Oh, the original. The original. Okay. First okay. one. I didn't know how old you were. Mr. Miyagi goes, uh, it's not about the belt. Yeah. It's about what's in here. It's in there. Yeah, because he's about to go to the tournament. I have never seen another martial arts film that hit it on the dot like that. Um, that one quote made the movie great. Mm-hmm. Everything else was, you know, but that really encaptured what I feel like we grew up doing. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I uh, grew up with five older brothers, all in the martial arts. Yeah. Um, like Edward was saying, we're dojo babies. We grew up, you know, Every day, pretty much in a dojo or training in martial arts, and yeah. seeing that every single day. I was um, helping teach at very day. Yeah, and years old, very yeah, time. going back, teaching. going back mm-hmm. into that, like all three of these guys were my instructors at one point, um, and uh, you know we've we've had several gyms over the year, and I, I watched you know from a very young age my dad building that business, building that um, martial arts school from you know. I don't remember that first gym with that first experience, but I remember um, where I really started training at seven was Dale and Christie's and um, being there for a long time. And, and every day after school, every day after school, every day, every day, we stay literally after school until 9 p.m. And then I remember always eating dinner late, like okay. around 10, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't get home until 10 from the dojo. Um and you know that was our normal. Yeah. It's really our normal too. I go football practice. Football practice is from three o'clock all the way to six thirty, and I have to go to the gym. And you know, no gym, and Juan would be there. Yeah, and go to go open all my doors. Yeah, and go teach and learn. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but it helped you tremendously in your football, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. And at, at one point, you know. Uh, he owned one of the largest martial arts schools here in Texas. So I, you know, we all grew up watching our dad go, you know, not only our journeys, but his journey as well. Um, so all of our, all of our experiences are all very different and unique, I think, to um, who we are. Now saying that and, and um, going off of that point, how do you guys think in your view, how has it changed from, you know, from when you grew up, you know, and mine is very different because I grew up in, the age where UFC was a thing, and I grew up where um, you know that was very popular, and that was like the boom of martial arts. So I grew up around that. You know, it's it was very very different for you guys. How was that? You know, and how's how is it different now? How is it changing? I think uh, it, it wasn't. Uh, it was it was a lot harder, guaranteed. And, and I want to focus on that, saying that um, traditionally, you know, there's some things that you go through uh, that you probably can't put a student nowadays through that because it's probably like child abuse. <laughs> Talk about uh, the belt. The belt, you always tell us this, uh, a, what a black belt really is. Right. Um, you know, traditionally, you only got one belt, which is a white belt. That's and it. throughout the whole years, it gets dirty. It gets dirty and what? It turns black. It turns black. And that's from your experience and your, you know, the time that you're you know, on that floor, on that dojo, on that mat. And really, uh, it got Americanized, and it's only when it came here that they started using different levels, which is great. And it's great because uh, it got commercialized and it got to where, okay, now we can, you can see your progression. And I think right. that's good. Right. You can see your progression, 
and uh, you can get tested on it. And I think it's good for the uh, uh, for the student. Absolutely. But you know, I still, you know, I didn't build these guys for fast. Yeah, 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 was, no, yeah, yeah, rapidly. I really don't believe in that. It's just you know, uh, they they went through their tests all the time that they showed up in class. Mm -hmm. So you know, doing a traditional test or whatever, they didn't have to because you know they always. We were learning. You were learning and you were sparring and you were going all out, you know. And I just, you know, with Donnie, I think he had one of the most difficult and challenging tests that a lot of people have seen. You know, he did two of them. He did a Kempo test under me and also on our knees, testing for the black belt. And, you know, I would literally, you know, I brought some guys in to, to spar them and this and that and literally pick them off the floor and you know, and, and uh, go to town with them. But, you know, oh my gosh, that's one thing that, that like really kills me because a lot of people, and that's, that's why I want to be, I want to, you know, I'm testing very soon, um, September. So, uh, anyways, um, that's something that I wanted to make an effort to document because I think, phew, uh, people don't really know what it takes to be a black belt because of how it's been Americanized. So going back into, you know, what you were saying is that it's kind of, okay, uh, next belt test is $200. Right. And those parents are going to pay it. You know what I mean? And whether or not those kids, you know, do what they got to do, uh, they're going to get belted. I, my dad, I, I totally forgot about this. My dad, Flunked, uh, flunked me or did not pass me on my orange ball test. Um, actually, Donnie and my dad, they talked about this, I remember. Um, I couldn't do a takedown. Couldn't do a takedown on, on uh, the boys. Couldn't take them down, couldn't do it right. Um, yeah, and me and my brother Andy, uh, who's not here, uh, we flunked. We didn't, we didn't pass and you will never, you will never see that at another dojo. Especially family. Yeah, and, that's right, and you're always going to show some favoritism to family, right? You know, we're just that's what you would think. That's what you would think. That's you know, so it. <laughs> I, I feel like you've kept, at least with us, you've kept so much of that traditional mm -hmm. um, teaching within our family. That oh man, that's something that I really am really grateful for. That you didn't let up on us because well, I didn't water it down. Yeah, yeah, because that's what it is now. It's I feel that it has been watered down a little bit, but um, you know, when you look at the tradition of how you are belt tested and stuff, you know, it's something special. I always thought it's it's something special. It's it's uh, not everybody can do it, and it's not for everybody. Not you know, when I teach this, the students that, I say, you know what, you know, it's not for everybody. But I still feel that everybody. I wish that everybody. Would would uh, uh, learn martial arts in the schools and so forth, and I think uh, not talk not really focused on the fighting part or whatever, but just the attributes that it shows with discipline and so forth. You know, I think that that's we need that so much right now, and that's what's changed. Yeah, so much from exactly. before. It it was like you know traditional martial arts, then like watered down commercial martial arts, to now it's just like. No one just want to fight, right. and yeah. there's no yeah. more. Yeah, there's no one part of it. Just one part of it. They just want to fight because of UFC MMA, which is good and bad. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, how it's changed, I, I like it, you know. But then I miss the old traditional style of, of how things used to be. You used to, you know, you would test, you would learn things. Now it's just like learn the technique so you can want to fight or do a cage match or things like that. Yeah, just a little, little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Instead of really like learning it as an art form and learning everything, how everything lives together. Like, okay, this technique, takedown is just good for you. Just practice the takedown. You learn this, this uh, combination, that's it. And it's repeated over and just more. Because it's, it's changed now, you know? Uh, it used to be where a martial artist, if you did martial arts, you you could beat up an athlete, you know, sometimes just because of what you know. Now it's athletes learning how to fight. Yeah, so now there's athletes learning martial arts. So it's a whole different ballgame, which is good and bad, you know, I like it because it makes people become, 
you know, some, some martial artists were kind of lazy <laughs> in training, you know, they just knew techniques, that, but they weren't really working out like it. Like athletes, now it's athletes training. So it's good and bad. I like the change, and then I don't like the change of what's, what's ha been happening. Uh, because there used to be so much loyalty to who you trained under and what lineage, what art you actually did. Now it's just going to this gym, this gym, trying to learn a fight to compete, that's it. Which is good because it advances you as a martial artist and you learn things. But I kind of miss the, the, the how, how proud you were of who was your other But girl, you know girl, what, girl. besides that, I think, um, you know, something that he really did, he lectured us a lot. We got yeah. a lot of lectures. We got a lot of mind, body, and spirit. We got a lot of um, what it means to be a martial artist and that dignity and that respect and the courage and the uh, self-discipline side of it. I think that's really what's missing. Yeah, that's true. I, I would agree on that because I've trained some other gyms and it's just like you learn the technique and that's it. And so you're not learning how to become a good human being. Yeah. And, and, uh, how to conduct yourself about, as martial artist. You talk about being a martial artist. In the gym and outside of the exactly. gym. That's right. Mm -hmm. We used to talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Carry yourself as a martial artist outside of you. Even when you walk out these doors, you know. As a martial artist, you know, five percent of that is fighting. Mm -hmm. The other, you know, you can't miss out on the whole picture of being a martial artist because there's so much there as a martial artist. You know, yeah. you have the, the uh, attributes and of course the respect that you get from it is tremendous. Right. Um, and I think Every child should learn martial arts. If they, you know, I know with Fresh Start from uh, Chuck Norris doing some of that in schools and so. But nowadays, you know, that's something that we're lacking, and you know, the discipline and the respect. Because I guarantee, you know, in, in my dojo, they're going to respect me, and I guarantee they're going to show the same respect outside the dojo. That's you right. know, to their parents and all that. Because you know, I really push that. It's very important. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think uh, one thing, you know, if you don't have that, and you know, like Donnie was saying, what we're teach, what people are teaching now is just to fight. Right. It's a bad <clears throat> mixture. It's a bad mixture. If you don't teach those attributes, if you don't teach that respect, if you don't teach that discipline, mm -hmm. um, in and outside of the dojo, it's a bad mixture. It's it's not it's not a good thing Correct. because. You know, you walk around, you know, I know how to fight, so I'm going to fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a lot different when you have that traditional grounding. Um, you got to couple that with the, uh, the other attributes, the non physical attributes. Right. You know? First thing you learn is white belt is respect. White belt represents respect. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn how to give respect in order to get respect. Mm -hmm. You know, yellow belt is self control, you know. So these things just go hand in hand with the, the physical aspect of it all. Yeah. I think it's very important. Like you, like you said, you said five percent is physical. The rest is mental. Very mental. Yeah. Very, the rest is mental. Well, let's talk about uh, the triangle: uh, mind, body, and spirit, and and how that has greatly affected us in all of our lives. Um, I know for me, it's. I think that's really been the cherry on top. I mean, well, you know, the triangle being. I always focus on the spirit you're in the very top being the most important. And <clears throat> I think uh, for me, uh, being a Christian uh, and a Christian martial artist, um, God is really, that's become a platform for me to um, introduce him to the other side of it, the, the spiritual side, which is, to me is the most important, the most important thing that you can teach a, a person because, you know, they can learn how to fight, they can do all the other attributes, but, you know, without that, that spirit in them, that real strong spirit, the other ones are going to fall short. You know, I, I've taught MMA, you know, uh, cage fighting and so forth, and I guarantee you, uh, you know, I can have two fighters with the same attributes, the same skills. This one over here having more of a stronger spirit, meaning just... Uh, within himself, and this one lacking that, I guarantee you, this one is gonna uh, be you know, the one that's gonna go on top. So, right, right. Um, I always taught that, and it's just still, and as I've gotten older, it's even more dominant to me now um, that I teach that, you know. So, um, very, very important. 
Um, for me, um, that teaching of mind, body, and spirit, it wasn't, it, you know, I talked about how he, he lectured us and, and taught us those things through, you know, that form, um, verbal, but it wasn't just through verbal. It was through every single class, every single lesson, every single day we went home, you know, we went home to that. It wasn't, it wasn't something that you just did in the dojo. We took that home. We took that training home. Um, so we were very much so raised as martial artists. We were raised as martial artists. Um, but I always feel like I sound crazy when I say this, but like I always feel like I'm two, two of me. Two, there's always two voices inside of my head. The only other person I've heard talk about this is David Goggins. If you don't know who David Goggins is, uh, Goggins is go look him up. He's pretty badass. Um, but he's the only per- other person I've heard talk about this, but I'm, I'm sure you guys know exactly, are going to know exactly what I mean when I say this. Um, there's one voice in my head that's always saying, like, it's, you know, it's going to be okay. Um, it's the voice that um, is, is nice, is nice. There's another voice that constantly, and I mean constantly, is a nagging, is a nagging voice that is trying to lead me or lead or direct me in, in some sort of direction that you don't know really, you know I don't always want to go and I think um that was built from you know you know stretching and that was built from holding you know push-ups on your knuckles and that was built from horses and that was built from um you know pulling that other side of you you don't really know where it comes from other side of you out and I think that's you know that's the spirit um you know and that's that voice that guides me into doing things that I'm scared of, into doing things that are that are difficult, into doing things that aren't very pleasant, but I know that, you know, this is going to make me better, and this is um, going to be good for me, and, you know, that voice is constantly there, even though this one's like, no, I don't really want to do it, this one says, go do it, go do it, um, and that, that for me, uh, you know, that's how I kind of relate to uh, the mind, body, and spirit, because I have a strong mind. I th- you know, I think that, you know, the calm, the, you know, it's going to be okay, that voice, that's my mind. That's what I think. But I think my spirit is that voice that is constantly saying, knows, it knows this is what you need to do. It, kn- it already, you know, I believe everybody already knows what they need to do. Yeah. You just have to quiet this thing up here and listen. And listen. Yeah, you know, listen to that, that inner voice that, you know, some people, <clears throat> some people don't even hear it no more. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. You don't listen to it. You'll get numb to it. Oh, like you said, everybody's society is numb to us. Yeah. <laughs> like if you don't listen to that inner voice, you're gonna be a slave to this system. That's it. You're gonna be a slave to the system that I already trained. Yeah. You know, listen to that voice. Yeah. You know, or it's gonna be like, oh, I gotta do this because I gotta pay this. And you know, and you don't even hear that voice that's telling you, hey, good, let's go right. try something else or create right. something else or you know. Right. I think it's very important. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very important um, through the martial arts. You have all those as, aspects of uh, your walking life, and it goes through your discipline on on training. Uh, really, man, it's, it's crazy when you're just talking about like we really grew up martial arts. Right? Yeah, I, sometimes I forget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. growing up here, had my own family. Yeah. I don't realize it's just kind of natural. It's That's just right. natural. It's like I thought yeah. everyone. Did this, you yeah, know, because you do it so many times, it's just, it's just every day. And, it, and when when Gabby said that, you know, we not only do we do it at the dojo, we take it home because our instructor is a father, <laughs> so you realize it, how much I, I just forget. Wow, yeah. So, if, if somebody came up to you and said, Who are you? Well, what would be your first? I mean, as far as you as a person, who are you? Right, I, I'd say I'm a martial artist. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I have on my Instagram. Yeah, and I, martial artist. <laughs> I, I just made a post about that on you Instagram. Know. That um, you know, I remember when I was like 12, and when I first got into acting, I went up to Dad, and I remember it was at his uh, rental home. I go up to him and I go, Dad, I don't want to do martial arts anymore. I want to just focus on acting. No, it's it's taking time away. I, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, and dad looks at me and he goes, okay. And that's something that I 
found that was so special about the way that he taught us because a lot of times when people are in situations like this, you know, the parent forces them, forces them, you gotta do this. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna do this and you have no choice. We always have a choice. But I never wanted we, to do that. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I didn't have a choice. I don't know what you're <laughs> Well, I yeah. I had no choice. But, and but, I'm happy I didn't have a choice, though. So yeah. I'm not good at this. Well, but, yeah, yeah. And, and that's a good thing. I don't have a choice. Um, and like, hey, son, come here. Punch me. <laughs> well, also, you got you to gotta tell him, too. He was one of my best suitcases, you know, and up to, I don't know how old you were, 18, 19? 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. 19. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he knew, he, you know, anybody uh, as a martial artist or a person that knew me or how I flow or how I do, he did. Because yeah. when we did uh, self-defense terms and stuff, we would. And I think that's what made me good because, you know, my dad did keep a karate on these. So those are standard martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ground fighting didn't really get into play to like UFC. So I started doing, you know, some ground when I was 18, 20, they really got really into it. But that's like, why you're getting into MMA. Yeah, MMA, right? So, yeah. And I did really well with it. But I think it's because of the feel of just being dad's okay. So I could feel. People's pressure with that, like, oh, okay, that hurts, trying to sense that sensitivity. sensitivity, right? And I think that's what I mean, being good with that is by why you just got really good, really fast. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, definitely. Did, you were definitely. really, really good, dude. Definitely. But you know, that was something yeah. that, that was something that uh, I felt good about is that every one of them, like I said, have different aspects of me, uh, yeah. of the martial arts, but I would also push them toward other instructors, you know, to learn something that maybe I didn't. Feel comfortable in like jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like the grounds. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll do uh, I could jitsu standing up, whatever. But yeah. I send him to somewhere to that will make him uh, good. Yeah. yeah, we. I I just think he's he's a best martial arts teacher you you can find. You know, just going back into you know whenever I wanted to quit. Um, you know, I quit for about two weeks. Um, I didn't really. <laughs> You know, it's your dojo. So you go home after school and you're sitting there and you don't really have anywhere to go. Nobody's going to take you home, you know, unless you want to walk home. And of course, my mom isn't going to have that. So, you know, you're at, you're at the dojo anyways. And then, you know, I remember after two weeks, I was like, yeah, you know, can I start martial arts again? He goes, uh, I know, I knew you weren't going to, I knew you weren't going to last very long because it's in our blood. Mm -hmm. And I believe that deep in my soul that it's not just something that we do it's who we are right. um you know yeah so. it's a yeah it's too much hard to, yeah you can't get away from it yeah yeah I mean, I think that's to to yeah. yeah it's just it's part of me once i get into the flow of teaching i forget even how much i know that sometimes when i'm well, teaching you know you've been around forever and yeah. i don't realize <laughs> all you guys yeah. yeah you know when i see them teach it's like you know, it's yeah. just, they know a lot. It's, it's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you guys say was your favorite martial arts memory? Just one. One favorite mm -hmm. martial arts mm -hmm. memory mm -hmm. that you can recall. Well, not favorite, but this one definitely just popped up in my head when I broke your ankle. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I remember that. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Oh, man. Um, man, uh, I, I think... When I really, really started to fall in love with martial arts was when I got into jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. um, but that's because I, I, and I started that competing. <laughs> yeah, that came from my brother Donnie. He, he gave that to me. Um, right. uh, uh, he was my jiu-jitsu instructor. And, you know, he would take me to competitions and I'd be all little boys. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I, I was pretty, I was, I was good. Um, and I remember... Man, yeah, that was a good. That's a good story. So me and my brother Edward were rolling one day because he was teaching class. Actually, he was teaching class, and he calls me up, and uh, uh, we were gonna roll. Um, it was like sparring. In, it's like sparring in uh, boxing as to what jujitsu rolling is. Um, so it's grappling. Grappling. Rolling, yes, wrestling. Getting positions. Wrestling, oh. right? Um, so he goes in for an Arnie's takedown. Now, this isn't a traditional. Uh, is that what you do? It's not yeah. a draw. Yeah, it's like not a, a traditional jujitsu takedown. It's I know what that is. Takedown. Yeah. Um, so he mean. pulls my ankle in, and I sit on it, and my it breaks. And 
the first thing I, I don't even feel it. The first thing I, I hear it and it goes, Never and I, I look at him and I go, wait, 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 wait. Oh. And then blood curdling scream just ensues. Oh. How old were you? I was in sixth grade. I was in sixth grade. And uh, so my ankle was broken. I remember, yeah. man, I was so torn, but you know why I was torn? Because we had a belt test in two weeks. We had a belt test in two weeks. I remember going to the hospital and I looked at my dad and I said, I can still test, right? I can still test, right? And he, he goes, no, no. And that killed me. Is that your that most memorable moment? Or that killed your most... me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I don't know if that was my most memorable most moment. Dramatic. My most memorable <laughs> moment was, uh, it wasn't really, yeah, it was one of the most traumatic. The most memorable moment was probably uh, my purple belt test. Purple belt test. So purple belt test, sparring my dad, kicks me to the ground. And, is, you know, this is my belt test. So he, he's saying to me, don't you want your belt? You know, you got to fight for your belt, fight for your belt. So I'm on the ground, I'm on my knees and he starts, you know, this sounds bad, but you know, this is, this is normal. This is, you know, we're martial artists. This is what we do. We have to fight for, uh, you know, our rank. We have to fight for, you know, prove ourselves. Um, and this is that moment. This is your belt test. And I'm on the ground. I'm on my knees. Are you joining the gang? What are you and doing? <laughs> he oh, starts okay. kicking me in my stomach, saying, "Get up, get up, Not get up." But he is kicking. And uh, <laughs> why she's crying? So I'm crying. <laughs> Cause Cause I'm so, so, bad. so bad. Yeah, I'm so bad. My dad is kicking but, me in the stomach. <laughs> I'm on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, okay. It's no, very it, controlled. It, yeah, yeah, it's very yes, controlled. Yes, everything. Yeah, let's just go back to that. Everything's controlled. I hope my dad. So then, so they're okay. I get up and I fight again, and that was probably my most memorable moment because does memorable mean happy? No, or just not necessarily. Okay, so my memorable moment is this: I never liked to spar with Dan. Nobody liked to spar him. You know, no one liked to spar with Dan. So I was, I was growing up. I'm getting better now. I remember, fifteen years old. 15 years old, my, my old my son is now. And so, you know, I'm getting better and everything, you know. He said, that's not gonna go hard on me. I said, I don't wanna spoil you because you're gonna go hard. You know, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. I know. <laughs> so I started, we started doing. and my dad has like a famous teeth kick. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know that, it's a front kick. And like, I don't know how you, he, he did, why he do it now, but he takes his top two knuckles and he pulls those things way back where it looks, it's literally like a little, a little ball of foot. And I see it coming. <laughs> and I said, no! <laughs> and it seems slow, slow motion. But I know it's like, ah, you know? But you know, when you start doing more shots and sparring, things slow down for me. I was like, no, boom! Right, so flex. And I said, dude, I was all mad at him. But that actually was the last time I sparred with my dad. Really? No way. Yeah. Not with him Are you I serious? went into the restroom. I was crying. Are you I was mad. Yep. That was the last time. That was the last time I sparred with Wow, that's that was crazy. <laughs> that teeth kick got me out. That's there. crazy. That's a memorable wow. moment, right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, I told you. I told you. <laughs> so, yeah. And you remember that, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was yeah. at the old uh, you and me. Yeah. What about you, Fox? What was your well, still to take on that is that I knew right then, I said, well, <laughs> he, he couldn't separate at that time to separate the dad from the instructor. So I'm like, oh, I, miss it. I, I better stop this morning. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was cool. But for me, I, oh my gosh, it was uh, the most memorable, I think, is when I opened our last dojo. You know, it was, like you say, it was one of the biggest ones. And, uh, just how it came about because uh, not know, only one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest ones in Texas. Yeah, so, that was ten thousand square feet. Right. right now, there's a big <clears throat> UFC gym. Right, right. right. Like, during that time, it was like a during that time, yeah. it was yeah, and oh, that was actually during the recession, uh, two thousand nine, right. which was you know I didn't realize that at the time because you know I'm so young. But looking back, I was like, Dad, how the crap did you do that? And it was without the the. Without internet, 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 without social media, you know, yeah. it, it was good it's old really traditional right. door. I remember we door went, door. all of us, we door all door. went door to door, door. door. Yeah. put flyers yeah. out, 
Um, knock on the door. Hey, do you want to join our martial arts, arts gym? Yeah. 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 But that was, yeah, for me, that was the most memorable mm-hmm. because it was all me. We were barely getting into the MMA scene. Yeah. And we yeah. went to California to join the pit. Everything was just flowing mm-hmm. so good. good. Yeah. You know, and we're growing so much. What's well, crazy? I like Jim. I mean, we're talking about martial arts and the difference. I think that's what's the difference between our, our, our gym is that it's a martial arts gym because there's some, actually some some really good kids and martial arts that came out of our gym and started competing in other things and became killers because I think the aspect that we trained more was the mental right. and the spiritual side part of it of uh, and the physical the spirit. Yeah, you know, physical too. Physical part of it, and then they went off and compete, and you. It's like, man, that kid can't march it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Definitely. and you can't. Um, Shout out to my you know, <laughs> if one of those uh, aspects is off, everything is off. You can't have the mental without the physical. You can't have the physical without the mental. You can't have the, the spiritual without that mental connection. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's that's something that definitely was bred out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Memory. That was good. And, and that all stems from when I first started. Yeah. You know, it was like, a, and I teach that, and they all have it. Now, all the students have it is that, you know, you might can beat me technically or whatever, you know, but I'm going to outwork you. Mm. And I would always. Mm. One of my um, favorite quotes from my dad. I remember this was actually at our uh, dojo that we have now. He takes me outside. No, I was probably like, what, 14, 15 at the time. And he mm-hmm. goes, Gabby. Girls are going to be prettier than you. They're going to be more talented than you. But you're going to make it because you're going to outwork them. And those words, he said it one time. And man, those words stuck with me. Yeah. 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 And that's something he, he always taught. And they um, all have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. So uh, finishing up here, how do you guys think as a family we can continue our lineage? Well, first of all, you all have to have kids. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. So these two, that's the only way you do it. Oh, I can't so carry it all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You have some more, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. So this is the first. You got it, bro. You got it. <laughs> so you guys are second generation. So I got to work with you guys. <laughs> and you got third generation. I have a third generation with the grandkids. With the grandkids. Yep. I'm sure. This all lies all on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Pretty oh, much. I think you can do the lineage. You yeah, know, by building on the gym that we have. Yeah. You know. Um. Even outside the family, you know, we we create very very decent human beings. You know, yeah. coming to the gym, you know, you know that that that's the part we need to. Yeah, for know? sure, for sure. I mean, we have nephews that are like in Tennessee, you already walk into martial arts as a rule, uh, a, a good uh, a good quality uh, uh, dojo up there, and you know, he started with me when he was eleven years old. Mm-hmm. You know, and just. That's the way he has to focus on his students as well. You know. <clears throat> yeah. it, uh, for me, uh, how you know I'm going to do that is one, getting my black belt, um, getting belted. You got to see that one. And, uh, yeah, which you guys will be a part of very soon. So keep a lookout for that. I'll be um, keeping you guys updated with that, uh, which, which is actually really it's going to be really cool. I'm actually going to take two weeks off of work. Um, I'm very blessed that I can do that. Um, and I'm just going to go live with my dad in Corsicana for two weeks before the test. I did that for 18 and, years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to train every single day. So, and that's going to be documented. Hi. 18 years. Hi. You guys suck. Oh, okay. Anyway. Anyway. But I'm going to get belted and, uh, uh, you know, continue my training for the rest of my life course right. um, because that that never stops and uh you know pass it to the future generations um now finishing up what would you say to someone young or older who wants to start martial arts but who hasn't started yet mm. young or older that wants to start that wants to start hasn't started, but hasn't started yet. i would say why do you even start i'd say start <laughs> i'd say just start you know well you know uh, a lot of the kids are, you know, being shy and so forth. I think you just got to dive in there and see if you like it. Yeah. You know, and like I said, it's not for everybody, but, you know, uh, it might be something in there that, you know, as far as the attributes or something that you like about it. And I think you, you're going to know if, if you're 
uh, telling your mom or your dad, hey, you know, I'm interested in this. You you already are, are you know are interested in it, and I think it has something for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can learn so much. Yeah, I say to ask them why do you want to start, so that they figure out why is that one started. But once you get, and then now, I'm not gonna say it's good or bad. And then now just begin, just start doing mm-hmm. it. You know, just do it. Just do it. Then. Yeah, because I think your reasoning will change that wrong way. For sure. For sure. That's how you do it. Sure. Your initial reasoning, why all want to be that. Like, okay. I mean, a lot of people want to start because they want to defend themselves. Which and, that's, and that's perfect. That's a perfectly great example. But what you will learn is, you know, you will learn how to maneuver more. You know, one of the things Pops taught me is first defense is your words, yeah. your mouth, yeah. your mind. Yeah. This is your first defense. Absolutely. Your mind. Can I maneuver out of this bad, potentially Absolutely. bad situation? Can I that's, that's using the martial arts. That's martial arts. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Absolutely. Oh, that Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and and honestly, I would I would encourage anybody who's interested interested in martial arts to just start because. Mm-hmm. You're never going to lose starting this journey. You're never, there's no part where you're going to lose or you're going to miss out. Um, it's worth investing in. Mm-hmm. It's worth it's a giving your time to. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter because it's a journey. It's not about the belts. It's not about the accolades. It, it's not about that. It's about what you get out of it spiritually, mentally, um, and physically, and how you bring that forth in your life every day. Right. And, and there's a lot of great instructors out there. Go to a, a dojo to where, you know, they should know how it's going to fit you. You know, they should look at you and already know, okay, you know, you might be physically bigger, stronger, whatever. Make sure that it, it's tailor fit to you. And if he's a good instructor, he's going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, that was that was our podcast for the day. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, this was actually really, really fun. I, I enjoyed sitting down and having this conversation with my brothers and my dad because we don't do this very often. And uh, I wanted I wanted to uh, experience that with you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, thank you guys thank for you, Dad. Being, I think, I think it's only fit to break out with a with warrior and scholarship. That's yeah, I think so. I, 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 yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Warrior? Warrior. Warrior. Scott. Scott. Scott.